The Poisson point process is very important in multi-object tracking, and it is often used to model several different aspects of the problem. In particular, it is the standard model for clutter, and actually the only model for clutter that we consider in this entire course. In this video, we present some of the key properties of Poisson point processes and provide enough technical details to drive the complete measurement model in the next two videos. Like I've already mentioned, the Poisson point process really is the default model for clutter. We use uppercase CK to denote the clutter matrix and lowercase CK with a superscript to denote the vectors in the matrix. Also, MKC denotes the number of clutter detections at time k. For the specific Poisson point process introduced in the previous video, where the expected number of clutter detections per unit volume was lambda, everywhere inside the field of view, the number of clutter detections is Poisson distributed with mean lambda times v. Also, given the number of detections, the vectors in the matrix CK are independent and identically distributed, and they are all uniformly distributed over the field of view. I've here used boldface v to denote the set of vectors in our field of view. To clarify what we mean by this, let us look at an algorithm that generates samples from this Poisson point process. So, to obtain a sample from this Poisson point process CK, we initialize CK to be an empty matrix. We then generate MKC from a Poisson distribution. Finally, we can use a for loop to generate all the vectors in the matrix. To do this, we simply generate a vector CKI from this uniform distribution, and then we include that vector as a new column in the matrix CK. We have seen a first example of a Poisson point process. One way to parameterize a general Poisson point process is using its intensity function lambda c. For instance, Sometimes we might expect more clutter detections in one region than another, and we can model this using an intensity function which is larger where we expect more clutter detections and smaller in the other regions. Another way to parameterize a Poisson point process is using a combination of the rate, lambda bar c, which is a non-negative number representing the expected number of detections, and fc of c, representing the spatial probability density function of the clutter vectors. As you can see, the rate is the integral over the intensity function lambda c of c, and the spatial PDF is a normalized version of lambda c of c. It's easy to verify that the spatial PDF integrates to one. From these equations, we can see that we can compute the rate and the spatial PDF from the intensity function. However, the intensity function can also be computed from the rate and the spatial PDF by multiplying the two together. It is clear from the expression of the spatial PDF that the rate then cancels out. Which of the two parameterizations that we use therefore simply depends on the task at hand and the one we happen to find more convenient. For the Poisson point process that we saw before, the intensity function is lambda everywhere inside the field of view and zero outside the field of view. Similarly, the rate is lambda times v and the spatial PDF is 1 over v everywhere inside the field of view and zero outside. Here, the rate tells us that the expected number of clutter detections is lambda times v and the spatial PDF tells us that the vectors are uniformly distributed over the field of view. We previously presented an algorithm to generate samples from the specific Poisson point process introduced in the last video. For general intensity functions, the algorithm to generate samples is essentially identical. We start by initializing CK to be an empty matrix and then determine the number of clutter detections by generating MKC from a Poisson distribution with mean lambda bar C. Finally, we generate the vectors CKI from the spatial PDF FC and add the vectors to the matrix. The main difference compared to before is that the spatial PDF does not have to be uniform, but the general algorithm contains the same steps. We can now look at the Poisson point process distribution. Suppose we want to evaluate the distribution for a matrix containing MKC different vectors, denoted CK1, CK2, and so on. It turns out that the distribution of CK is identical to the joint distribution of CK and MKC. We will elaborate on this step on the homepage by providing a short proof, but intuitively speaking, the equation holds because MKC was in some sense already present, since it is the number of column vectors in CK. The joint distribution of MKC and CK 
can now be factorized into the product of the distribution of mkc times the distribution of ck given mkc, which are two distributions that we know. The first corresponds to the probability of obtaining precisely mkc vectors, which is the Poisson distribution with parameter lambda bar c, evaluated at mkc. The second factor is the probability to obtain the vectors ck1, ck2, and so on, given the value of mkc. And since the vectors are independently generated from fc, this is the product over i of fc cki. For our current purposes, this expression is actually enough, but there is an alternative way to express the distribution that will appear every now and then as we continue. To see this, we note that this Poisson distribution is e to the power of minus lambda bar c times lambda bar c to the power of mkc. All of this divided by mkc factorial. Whereas the spatial distribution of fc is lambda c over lambda bar c. As you can see, lambda bar c to the power of mkc cancels out since we divide by lambda bar c in each factor in this product, which becomes precisely 1 divided by lambda bar c to the power of mkc. The only remaining factors are therefore e to the power of minus lambda bar c divided by mkc factorial times the product over i of the intensity function lambda c of cki. It's good to learn to recognize this expression for the Poisson point process distribution, since you will see it every now and then in the upcoming weeks. Just to end with something visual, let us look at samples from a Poisson point process. For simplicity, we have returned to the Poisson point process described previously, where samples are uniformly distributed over the field of view, and the expected number of detections is 3.2. As you know, the spatial distribution is uniform over this area. However, it may be more interesting to look at the number of detections that we obtain. In this example, we know that the expected number of detections is 3.2. But as you can see, the number of elements varies significantly from zero detections to six detections in the few realizations observed here. 